Hello, my name is Bearhead. We're introducing a new cooking program for public television. It's called Cooking with the Colonel, meaning Colonel Doug Allard, who is a gourmet chef unknown to me for quite a few years, but he's quite good at his art, and he will be showing you how to cook deer, elk, commodities, whatever you have. He's uh, quite good at it, and we hope you'll enjoy the program. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to uh, another segment of Cooking with the Colonel. We're certainly enjoying doing all these things on wild meat, and today we're going to do something that's a little bit different. We're going to do deer roast with wild mushroom gravy. And I'll explain about the mushrooms uh, when we get there. Uh, I already have a roast in the oven, so you don't have to wait three and a half hours to uh, eat it, see what it looks like when it's done. But I have a little roast here from a white-tailed deer, and I'm going to show you how I prepare the roast to go, to go in the oven. First of all, this little roast uh, was packed by Rive Meats, who does a real good job. And they've prepared all of the meat that we've used on this show so far. The roast we have in the oven isn't quite as pretty as this, uh, because it was, it's a whole shoulder of a white-tailed deer and it was hand cut, it still has a bone in it, but it's not as pretty as this, but it'll taste just as good. What we have here is a little chuck roast from the front shoulder of a white-tailed deer. I'm going to salt and pepper it all over, and I'm going to put a little garlic salt on it. Even though my friend and taster Bearhead doesn't like garlic too much, I've fed him a lot of things with garlic, and he ate them and never even knew the garlic was there. Because if you do garlic and you don't do too much of it, it adds a lot of flavor and a lot of richness to any dish. So I put the salt, pepper, garlic powder on it. Looks like quite a bit of garlic to me. See, he complains about everything, but when, he, when it gets to the table, he eats it. Then I put it in the roast, in the roaster, fat side up. Take some minced onion. You can use sliced fresh onion if you want to. I prefer, uh, like the minced onion because it goes into the bottom of the pan, and as your juices and your water cook, it makes a real nice base for gravy. So just cover the top with the, with the uh, minced onion. Put about a cup of water in there. That's all there is to it. Put the lid on. Throw it in the oven for about three, three and a half hours. I like to cook these roasts till they just about fall apart. For about three, three and a half hours and basting it from time to time. If you have a little baster like this, just open it up every half hour, 45 minutes, baste it a little bit. Now I'll show you the one that we're cooking right now. This is what this one looks like. Set it on that plastic and it'll probably blow up. This is what this one looks like. Now what we're going to do right now is add the mushrooms and cook them for about 15 minutes. Uh, before we take them out, take the roast out, and make the gravy out of the mushrooms and the pan juices. Uh, these mushrooms are shaggy manes, which were gathered last fall and frozen. Usually I use morels, which don't freeze well, but they dry well. Shaggy manes don't dry well because they're so loose that you can never get them to stay on the string. If you dried them on a wire or something, I guess you could do that, but we dry them on a string. so. 
This is, uh, this is about nearly a pound of shaggy manes. And what I'm going to do is put those into the juice all around the roast. And I'm going to put that back into the oven for about 15 minutes. While they cook, then we'll take the roast out and make the gravy. In the meantime, since Bearhead is strictly a meat and potatoes man, today he's going to get meat and potatoes, but because he doesn't really like garlic a whole, a whole bunch, what I'm going to make for him is garlic mashed potatoes, and we'll see if he likes those. To do that, you boil your potatoes, which we have cooking already. Boil them about 15, 20 minutes till they get soft enough. They're not quite ready yet. So we'll start making the garlic for the, that you mix into the mashed potatoes. And with the, the garlic sauce that goes in the mashed potatoes, you use a couple tablespoons of butter, put in uh, three or four cloves of garlic. I'm going to use already processed garlic because it's easier and quicker. Uh, you cook that for three or four minutes, and then you uh, add the heavy cream and cook that down about a half. takes about another 10, 15 minutes. Then you mash your potatoes, and after they're mashed, you pour all this garlic stuff in there remash them again and that's uh, about it. It's a very simple process. And so I've got to check to see if my potatoes are done here yet. Not quite. So we'll melt our, melt our butter in here, get our garlic. Doug We're, never cooks with, uh, with margarine. He always uses butter. Don't use margarine for anything. Always use butter for everything. It tastes better, and according to a lot of people, it's actually better for you than margarine. I've got a couple of cookbooks that say margarine is uh, really not good for you. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I believe it. So that's what I do. There's our butter. We're going to take some processed garlic, which is a little easier than... using the cloves of garlic, which I have done too. We're going to cook that for a few minutes just till it gets kind of a light brown color. Put just a little salt and pepper in there. Stir. And when you cook your garlic, you, uh, you have to kind of keep stirring it all uh, constantly. It looks about like this. And as you stir it, you'll see it uh, begin to change, turn a little bit yellow. And uh, then don't, don't burn it or anything. But when you see it getting kind of a yellowish brown color, about like that. Then we'll take some uh, heavy cream add that to the garlic. We'll let that simmer there, turn the heat down a little bit to medium or a little lower. And we'll let that simmer for a while until that cooks down probably about, about two-thirds. While we're doing that, we'll take our boiled potatoes over here off, drain them, keep the pan here because we're going to put those back in there and mash them pretty soon. 
keep stirring our sauce here. Bearhead's been complaining that all he gets is meat to eat, and since he's your basic meat and potato eater, he said that the uh, artistic presentation hasn't been too good. That's why today he's getting garlic mashed potatoes, he's going to get some steamed vegetables, and he's going to get a little roast with mild wild mushroom gravy. He's going to be graded two ways today, on technical merit and artistic presentation. Well, now, I didn't, he kept fighting me over this, and so I said, well, I'm going to do it. So I walked in here this morning, and I see this beautiful layout here, complete with uh, a napkin and uh, no silverwares yet, a wine glass, a nice little coffee cup and a saucer. And he's, uh, but so I'm going to give him two scores today, one for technical merit and one for Here's your silverware. <laughs> See how you set it on there. Sorry, we forgot that. I'll probably get a six now. <laughs> he, he, uh, he's a little bit shook up over the first grade I give him of, uh, of an 8.5 for that Swiss steak that he did to a deer. And so I've been giving him tens, and, and he's a little happy now. We don't want to make the cook unhappy. Check our roast and our mushrooms in here. Excuse See how me, we're the doing. chef. Okay. These are coming out pretty darn nice. This is our roast. I'm going to throw this other one in there while I'm at it because that one's for my family for dinner. But it won't quite fit on that rack because this one has a knob on it, so we'll move this down another one. Throw her in there. You know, one of the things I'd like to mention Turn is that Doug, Doug does all the cooking here. He, they, uh, he does all the cooking for his family. A little and, more uh, salt and pepper here in the garlic sauce. Down just a little. Garlic's looking good. Now we'll take our roast right here, which looks pretty good, even though it was amateur cut and amateur tied and amateur cooked. Now we're going to take our mushrooms, the cooking juices, which kind of look like that. Uh, I'm going to take the mushrooms and the cooking juices, put them back on the burner. We'll move the sauce to the back burner. Turn this one up. We'll mix a little flour and water here together to make our gravy. We've got the wild mushrooms and the sauce off of the deer now cooking here. It's just coming to a boil right now, which is just the right time to do this. Get our flour and water mixed up. Pour it in kind of slowly as you go. Keep stirring. Keep it bubbling. When you make gravy, you just about have to stir it constantly, especially right in the beginning, because you never know how thick it's going to come out or what it's going to look like when you're through, and you certainly don't want to burn it. There's nothing worse than burned gravy. Okay, that's a little thick in there now, so I'm going to get a little more water. 
pour a little more water in there until we get her about the right consistency. If you like thick gravy, leave it thick. If you like thin gravy, put a little more water in it. This is looking pretty good. I'm going to put a little pepper in that. The mushrooms have a little salty, kind of a little uh, flavorful taste to them. So they in themselves add a particular, particularly good flavor to anything you put them in. You can use morels or shaggy manes, uh, either one for this. I'll get it down there about the right consistency here pretty soon. Here's what we look like now. Here's what our, our gravy is looking like right now with the uh, shaggy manes, uh, the beef drippings, a little water, and a little flour. We're going to let that sit now. We're still back here stirring up our garlic and cream, which is going to go in the mashed potatoes here in a minute. Check our steamed vegetables. Going to be done about the right time. Now we'll turn our gravy on low. Let it sit here for a while while we take care of our potatoes. And what we have to do with potatoes, take them back out of the drainer, put, put them back in the pan, take a fork, mash them up. You could use an electric mixer if you want to. Uh, I never do. Might use a little bigger fork there. Doug, I noticed you left the uh, peelings on uh, for mashed potatoes. Yep. I like the peelings. I cook them, but I don't mash them with. Well, I'll tell you why. I, these are new white potatoes and I think you take about half of the health benefits and half the taste away if you peel them. They're uh, new and they're small and they're tender and the peelings are not thick like they are in a big russet or a baking potato. And uh, I, just, I just like them better that way. And I actually think they taste a lot better too because the peelings in a potato have some flavor. The potato itself is, is pretty bland. But, uh, and I don't have to mash my potatoes up so they're, they're creamy looking. You can put them in a blender if you want to and do that. But I just like them so they're broken down somewhat and so they look, look decent and taste good. Actually, if they're a little lumpy, that tastes better to me. Might not look too good on the plate. That's down, points down for artistic presentation there. And maybe. here's what our mashed potatoes are looking like. Not like they do it if you do a mixer or a blender, but this is the way I like them and this is the way I recommend cooking them. Pretty well done right now. Now we're going to add the garlic, which has cooked down somewhat to these mashed potatoes. I'm going to add the garlic and cream. Mix them around a little bit. Now you're not going to get big mounds of white looking restaurant style mashed potatoes out of this. What you're going to get is a big mound of kind of chunky mashed potatoes with a very delicate gar garlic flavor and a nice creamy consistency. So this is what they look, this is what they look like when they're through. 
they're all ready to go now. I like to let them sit for a few minutes uh, just so that all the, the cream and the garlic flavor absorbs into the mashed potatoes. So we'll sit these on the back back here. Uh, turn that burner off. Check our gravy out here. Oh, the gravy is getting better by the minute. Nice and thick and brown, full of those wild mushrooms. And in the meantime, we'll find a knife here someplace. I don't know where my good knife went. And I got something in here that's sticky. And we'll give a shot at slicing this roast. Now, this roast isn't going to be the most beautiful big slices of roast deer that you ever saw. First of all, because it's got a bone in the middle. Secondly, because it's the entire front, front shoulder of a little white-tailed buck, and you have to roll it around. So when we cut it, it's not going to come off in big slices. It's kind of going to come off in chunks. That's how I'm yeah. going to eat it, in chunks. You get to the bone. We tied this up with some strings, which we'll remove at this time. I should give Bearhead the string to eat, <laughs> and we can eat the roast. Artistically, it'd be pretty, pretty sitting on a plate. OK, we're down to the bone, so we just have to go down and cut around that bone and See what kind of pieces we get off of there. Well, what we'll do is whack this piece off of this side. In slicing the deer, we took that piece off one side of the bone, and we can actually get some pretty decent looking slices off of this side. But when you cook a shoulder roast, it isn't going to come out like a rump roast or a loin roast where you can slice it up and have beautiful looking uniform slices. Uh, it just doesn't come out that way. This is cooked just about to the exact way I like it cooked. And that's a medium well. There's still just a little bit of red on the inside, but nothing too drastic. Now, take this meat, place it on the platter. Like this. May as well cut the rest of this off while we're at it. This won't cut in very good slices, but this is what we call deer meat, eating deer meat on the reservation. And you just cook her and eat her. And this one here, I guarantee you, will be tender, tasty. And done just the way I like it done. We'll remove this meat, the platter. And we'll take our gravy. I like to put a little gravy on top of the meat. Looks kind of pretty that way. That's just enough for me. I don't know what you're going to eat, but that's enough for me. And we'll reserve the rest of the gravy for the potatoes. Check and see how our vegetables here are coming. Just about right. So we're about ready to serve bear head his dinner and see how that grabs him. I'm even going to give him a little slice of bread today. Nice crusty French bread 
goes good with this roast. Garlic bread doesn't because you already have enough garlic flavor there for you. So we'll slice him off a few slices of French bread here. Put them on his bread plate, which we all have there. See that? How about that for artistic presentation? <laughs> That's pretty chest, pretty chest. Then we're going to put a little meat on the plate here. Just like that. Mmm, tastes good. We're going to put a little garlic mashed potatoes. Doug, leave some gravy off a of part of the mashed potatoes. I don't put the gravy on the mashed potatoes because in reality, Bearhead is a meat, potato, and gravy eater. He doesn't realize that these mashed potatoes are so good they don't require gravy. That's what I was going to say. The meat requires gravy. It doesn't require it. just tastes better. But he's not a very sophisticated eater, he's, he's so I kind of have to teach him how to eat as we go along. Here. I'm never going to give you another eight and, eight and a half again. I've lived with that for four weeks. So here we go. There's your roast venison, as they call it. The test. Your garlic mashed potatoes, a couple of steamed vegetables. And ladies and gentlemen, to top it off, we have something that I'll bet Nobody huh. has ever tasted before, and Bearhead probably won't drink it, but that's homemade wild huckleberry wine. Now, we'll see how we're doing today. Did you taste the potatoes yet? I haven't tasted the potatoes yet. Haven't tasted the Try them potatoes again. Pretty good, Douglas. Pretty good. Pretty a good. Salt, a little salt and pepper for you, Master. Although you probably won't need it. I don't need it. No broccoli. I'm like Bearhead doesn't eat broccoli, so I purposely gave him broccoli no. and garlic today. And if he can eat two things that he doesn't even like, our cooking must be pretty good. I we'll give it a shot. I'm gonna. I won't. You won't get a ten on the on the broccoli. Even George Bush, Bush won't eat broccoli. And uh, he said, to me, "My mother couldn't make me eat it. You're not gonna make me eat it, but I'll try it." Mitch, it's broccoli. Broccoli. Now, uh, have you tried the meat yet? Meat, delicious, Doug. Good. I usually don't cook roast because I prefer steak to roast. But this is real good. I've heard you talk before about your favorite was roast. That's right. I'd rather have a roast than anything. So is everything acceptable, acceptable to you, Master? Is, well. Uh, are the things uh, things suiting your palate? I, I'm going to, I swear, Doug, you, you've outdone yourself today. Uh, I'm going to change my thinking about roast instead of steak. It's certainly more healthy for you, I guess. Because I fry everything in grease. Uh, the vegetables, which I very rarely eat. But the whole thing is, uh, I, I'm going to have to give you a 10. Hey, all right. We got that. And uh, for uh, artistic presentation, a technical merit of 10. That's his ability as a cook. Artistic presentation is... Uh, is uh, Oh, I forgot the glass of water. I forgot the glass of water. He, with that, he just made a tan. Wait a minute there. There you go. With there, that, the water, he just the made a tan. The water is full now. Are, are little, we okay? The little coffee cup here. Which Fill is, the coffee again. Yes, we got that right here. The little coffee cup, which is perfect for this kind of a setting. You don't want a big mug. So all in all, Doug, I'm going to give you, because this is, ice skating season and the, the trials are on and they're giving scores for technical merit and and uh, artistic presentation uh, I'm gonna give you two tens very good two tens we certainly hope that you enjoyed it thank you very much we'll see you next time 
Bearhead is a meat, potato, and gravy eater. He doesn't realize that these mashed potatoes are so good they don't require gravy. That's what I was going to say. The meat requires gravy. doesn't require it. just tastes better. But he's not a very sophisticated eater, he's, he's so I kind of have to teach him how to eat as we go along. Here. I'm never going to give you another eight, eight and a half again. I've lived with that for four weeks. 